Hey, Mr. Nemo. I do feel like we've been learning about Ironclad. I feel like I've learned that Heavy Blade is a perfectly fine Floor 1 card. I've learned that you never want to ignore and evolve. You should at least consider it. We've learned that too many attack cards will spell your downfall, so we have to figure out how to not get too many of those. Hmm, potential burning elite snipe here. I don't hate an elite snipe. Random rare card on ironclad can be kind of cool. Learned the hard way that runic cube combust is a terrible combo. Yeah, I just pointed that out to chat la a couple runs ago. Is the challenge about winning a 20 streak with each of the characters, or are we only focusing on clad? We're doing one character at a time. So we started with ironclad. We're going to try to streak 20 on ironclad. And then at some point, we'll swap characters and try with uh, silence, with defect, and with watcher. Learn that um, the first feel no pain is almost always a pick and act one. That what I would say definitely is the case. I think we've learned that Lagavulin and Guardian are some of the hardest things in Act One. Got to respect Hexagos too. You need to pick up scaling damage to beat this boss. We're feeling random rare card today. Let's see what we get. We get a limit break. So that encourages us to take a strength card if we see one early. Could be a reason to go to an early shop. I like this shop. Four combat, uh, three combats and an event on the way to this shop. That sounds pretty good. Shop might have an inflame or a spot weakness or something. That's pretty good. How's it going, Bog? New to Spire, about 40 hours in. What would I say is the biggest tip to making your way up the ascensions on Ironclad? Don't think too hard about blocking with this character. There are a lot of block cards and synergies that the Ironclad has access to, but nothing this character can do is nearly as effective as just slapping all your enemies to death as quickly as you can and then healing six with burning blood. So don't be afraid to neglect block entirely in pursuit of really effective damage so that you can smash your foes easily. The other quick tip I'll give for Clad is that Exhaust is a very powerful effect. Exhausting cards during combat, even your strikes and defends with something like a True Grit or a Burning Pact can be very good because if you avoid redrawing your basic cards, that means you're gonna redraw your other cards, your upgraded cards, your advanced cards more often. And that is in itself a form of scaling, a way to make yourself more powerful. So a card like Burning Pact, use this to exhaust, strike and defend, or whatever you don't need for the current battle, and you can become stronger. Yeah, don't think of it as an, a downside. It, it really is an upside. It's a, it's a way to scale for this character. I also owe the chat a dad joke. Did you hear about the Ironclad that ran a marathon? He was exhausted. <laughs> I'll take an Infernal Blade as my first card. And I'm going to a shop? Give me the doubt. Although this means we'll have two bad cards in the next two combats. It's a little worrying to have doubt and limit break against Jawworm here, but I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Bummer. That's bad. That's really bad. Terrible. Absolutely horrible. As expected. Ouch. Two stacks a weekend, too. That hurts. And strength jawworm. That hurts, too. Oh, bummer. That's a big bummer. Can't kill it. Take another 12 here. I use Hemo to win. That was a really painful showworm. A really good example of why I uh, early curses and early random rares can very quickly hurt you. In a very bad way. Oh boy. This isn't going well either. Good reminder not to take 
random rare starts. Take 11 damage next turn? I do. Fair trade for floor one feed, sure, but I won't have a floor one feed here. strike but I don't love it okay we made it to the shop we found chemex to go with our whirlwind that's kind of cool although our last chemex whirlwind run did not win still gonna buy it very powerful there's another perfected strike here that's not bad boot thingy is pretty good give me that I can buy flex Flex Limit Break's a thing. Flex Whirlwind is a thing. I'll buy the Flex. See how that goes. I'm a little concerned here. Only a little bit. We definitely upgrade our Whirlwind with Chemical X. Not Sentries, but we get to Flex Limit Break. That's really cool. We could do Bash Flex Limit Break. I'm in. And I get two strength. Is this the transmutation run? A legend. Wow. Wow. Easy game. Give me an uppercut. Yeah, give me an uppercut and upgrade uppercut. Seems good. Jawworm dealt more damage than Legavulin. That's what you get when you sleep on the job. Card draw. Whirlwind? Oh, come on. Whirlwind, where are you? Please. What the heck, Whirlwind? Dang it. There we go. Pantograph. Heal 25 at the sort of boss combats. And the second whirlwind. Oh, yes. It's happening. Oh, yes. Upgrade two random cards. Probably, right? We can... No, that's not a rest site. Uh... 11. Maybe not. No, I don't think so. I thought this was a rest site for a second, but it's not. Right, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is why you don't do it. Spooky. Very spooky. Spooky. First you strong, then you bonk. Mm. Nah. Don't need any of that. This would draw a card. I don't really want to draw a card, though. 
Because I won't be able to play it, so let's wait till next turn. I'm gonna say this would be a good turn for uppercut. This is not uppercut. Next turn guaranteed kill though. I'll take it. Get Omamori negating two curses. And if we want a brutality to draw us more cards, I do like that actually. Brutality looks good. This would allow us to take Rupture too. Hello. At least we have an explosive potion. That'll solve this fight. But yeah, I'm feeling a little scammed here. Do get a potion back. Do get a source of strength. Spot weakness. If the enemy intends to attack, gain three strength. And this is very much the sort of deck I was talking about earlier, where I mentioned sometimes on Clad you want to ignore block and just go full damage. That's exactly what we're doing so far. We have no added defense whatsoever, other than the weakness on the uppercut in uh, nine added cards. It's all about card draw, doing massive damage, and scaling our damage. And that is just fine. Pantograph is, I wouldn't call it bad, necessarily. It's a little disadvantageous. Thinking about either Flex or Whirlwind, we should upgrade the other Whirlwind. I don't feel the need to upgrade Limit Break. I'm just going to make our spin extremely win. Ooh. Good enough. play that. Shouldn't need the block potions. Or the dex potion, that is. We might want to use the Distilled Chaos if our draw order isn't favorable here. We missed the spot weakness already. That's kind of bad. Nice. Take some hits. Hexaghost is very much a damage race, so as you're approaching this boss at the end of Act 1, you definitely want to add pretty much as many damage options as possible, including ways to scale, that is, make all your future attack cards do more damage. If you can do that, then Hexaghost ain't too much of a problem. Now, it looks like our damage is uh, above curve here. Didn't even need to land Spot Weakness to make this a quick kill. GG. Double tap is very good with these whirlwinds. Double tap is very good with these whirlwinds. Barricade could allow us to retain block, but what block? I'm Rando says, on clad, which is the scariest Act 1 boss? I actually think it's Guardian, usually. Clad struggles to block as consistently as some of the others and cannot trade hits with Guardian um, like you can with some of the other bosses. I'll take a double tap. Yeah, didn't we have a deck like this yesterday? That was our losing run yesterday, was the double Chemex, double Whirlwind Chemex double tap run. But I'm doing it again because I've got Curse Key Omomori. That's a very good way to get a fourth energy, which makes our Whirlwinds slap harder. Makes the ink bottle work better. That said, this is also a very good chance to take Black Star, giving us extra relics off elites. But I think with the Omamori, Curse Key is too good to ignore. It would have been a pretty good Black Star. Interesting starting option here. We don't want to go up this way, so we're starting here. 
And then we either go to the shop in the Burning Elite or we go through this. Kind of tough, actually. So we should probably go here-ish? These two. Yeah. Start this way. Bird nerds? Oh, come on. Whirlwind. What the heck? Ink bottle. Draw whirlwind. No. Outrageous. There we go. Get absolutely destroyed. Easy peasy. How's the forge pot look? It's actually not that good. I'll skip this forge potion. Well, the next potion's also pretty bad. All right, fine. Need a bottle for these whirlwinds. That's what I'm saying. Woo! This is a good time for distilled chaos, for sure. Flex, spot weakness, limit break, uppercut, distilled chaos, I think. Although, that would make the whirlwinds relatively weak. Too bad. Yeah, too bad. Dead. More energy? Energy is scaling. A bonus chest. I'll open it. And I'll take it. 51 gold. Bag of preparation means we draw two more cards on turn one. That to me says we can fight the Burning Elite. Let's fight that Burning Elite. Now we're going to be drawing Whirlwind on turn one, as we're meant to. And enemies are just going to instantly evaporate. <laughs> this is like the last run. <laughs> no, wait. Bag of Marbles? Bag of Marbles is insane here. Me that. Bag of Marbles card remove. Lose a strike here. This seems good to me. Mag of Marbles. Now we'll upgrade flex. I know, a total speed run deck, right? Absolutely. This is the kind of deck that just kills things on turn one, making the fights real short. Whirlwind. Clash. Get out of here, Clash. Oh, dear. Oh, no. I have to forge pot this? Embarrassing. It is a good forge pot, I guess. All right. Because then the bash kills the fat gremlin. Actually, the strike kills the fat gremlin. I can bash the leader. Even better. Good turn. Didn't attack me. Even better. Not that it matters, because Whirlwind does this much damage. Holy moly. And again. Matryoshka? Wait a minute. <laughs> Scammed. It was freaking Black Star. Whatever. Take a third Whirlwind. Ripple Whirlwind. The power. The almighty power. I think that means Double Tap is now a good upgrade. More spin. More win. 54 gold. Lantern. Lantern. Bag of prep. Bag of marbles. Take the blue key so we can skip our chest in Act 3 here. I think I'm going to go this way. Actually, I don't need to go to this shop. But I do want to find Thwack again. Greetings, slavers. Uh, 
<laughs> Got him. Now we have a shovel. We can dig for more relics. And a burning pact. This is good card draw. Don't ignore burning packs. This is one thing I've learned here. Is that we need to be taking the stuff that exhausts cards and draws cards when we can. For the late game. That's why you set up the ink bottle. That's right. Remove a card or upgrade all of our strikes and defends. I say we remove more cards from this deck. Although four defend upgrades is kind of nice. Getting rid of all the starter cards I think is the goal here. Just so we draw Whirlwind on turn one more often. Scammed. Now we're talking. 12 times 6. Shockwave for AoE weak and Vuln. Just have the one uppercut right now. That's not enough. Do we take block now? Yes. We need to find cards that form the core of a defensive strategy as we go through the remains of Act 2 and Act 3 here. Let's take one more event. Ooh, oh, is it time for Necro? Pay 21 health here, get a book relic, and all of them are sweet. It is Necro. It was totally Black Star, by the way. We get the Necronomicon. The first attack played each turn, costing two or more, is played twice, which means our whirlwinds are even dumber now. As long as we spend at least two energy on them, they get played two times. So we are ultimate speedrunner blappage deck. We also have a feed. There's no way I can land feed in this deck. There's no way. What's my spiker solution? Is a good time to ask this question. I don't have one. I have a mercury hourglass. Okay, that's my spiker solution. Buying an impervious is a pretty good idea. I'm going to dig. Strike dummy. Our strike cards now deal three more damage. Pretty mediocre. Yeah, I'm sad we've already used the Omomori charges too. That's why I said Black Star actually would have been better. But we didn't know that. Oh, this turn is amazing. How much damage is this, actually? This would be... Wait, what? <laughs> He's dead! Alright, that's how you get a turn one boss kill achievement, Twist Shot. He's freaking dead. <laughs> you are nothing to me, champ. You call that a weapon? Now this is a weapon. <laughs> well, I guess since there's no block cards here, I'll just take another limit break. What was the math on that? So we had three energy with double tap active. Chemical X adds two more to each play of Whirlwind. So each Whirlwind was five hits of 33 damage. And we played it three times. One extra time from Necronomicon, one extra time from Double Tap. So that was 33 times five times three, which is a lot. All right, we don't need to take Philo Stone. It's either Astrolabe or Slaver's Caller. I'm done for Slaver's Caller. More energy means even bigger whirlwinds during the boss and elite fights. Yeah, so 495 damage from that one whirlwind play. Oh my good lord. <laughs> Definitely afraid of Philo Stone in the late game. Heart with extra strength is spooky. This is an okay Astrolabe, actually. Three strikes. But I think I'm just going to take the more energy here. 
and we're going to look for block options fairly aggressively in Act 3. That does mean we want to go to relatively few non-combat nodes. But I'd like to take a lot of fights, if possible. A bunch of upgrades. We can dig for relics, too. So this path looks okay. We get one question mark node. We get an early shop to remove a card. We get two elites. Two elites. Could do three. Actually, hold on. That's a bit better. We get one more elite this way. One more event as well. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Where's my spiker solution? Help! Help! Concerning. Very concerning. Probably should have just bludgeoned it on turn one with the, the uh, bludgeon there, but that would have meant taking a bunch from the other as shape. Oh, I could have Whirlwind after, though. Yeah, I should have just bludgeoned it on turn one. Y'all are correct. This takes 18, so we're down 12. Be hard to do better than that. We out of here. All right, we're looking for card draw in the late game, and evolve does count. Especially if we can find something like a second wind. Somebody was asking, "Is this a run where we find a transmutation?" The answer is yes, it is. So I will do that for the first time in a long time here. Take a transmutation, which generates two additional cards, courtesy of Chemical X. Now, is that going to be a good thing? Hard to tell. But it might just be amazing. Generate five cards. Two of them are transmutations. One of them is a band of greed, making me more money. Seems pretty good. Also a free barricade, double panacea panic button, by the way. So yeah, don't... Be careful who you make fun of in high school. This blocks, kind of. I don't think Body Slam does. Body Slam's... We got enough damage already. We good, we good. Not Spikers, good. Oh? Not, uh, not Whirlwind either. Get him. Sure. If I find a feel no pain, we'll have we'll be pretty happy about that war cry. Surgery deer. Thanks for the prime sub in the two months. But where are the block cards, game? Where are they? Actually, let's take the Elite before the rest site. I'm going to dig, actually. Hmm. Two upgrades for the price of one. We upgrade Shockwave, Transmutation. Badass. Nice dig.
nice dig. We one shot. We're not that strong, unfortunately. This does do a lot of damage, but not nearly enough. Probably should have put back the other whirlwind. Maybe that was smarter. It's fine though. Yeah, it's only uh, 343 plus an extra 100 or so. So we only do 421 damage, unfortunately. Really disappointing turn, I, I know. That is how it be sometimes. Where's the block, they said? Transmutation's all of the block. Don't need block when you've got transmutation. Pennib. Every tenth attack is doubled in damage. Rage can block? I think I need to take this Rage over the Battle Trance. Rage is actually okay block. Get in here, Rage. Oops. Hmm. Oh yeah, you're already um, vulnerable. So this is 12 by 14. Good lord. Good lord, I say. And this would be six times six times two plus six. Exactly lethal, I believe. Dark Embrace. Whenever a card is exhausted, draw a card. That's also a important part of a late game block plan. Getting curses is not part of my late game plan, so I'm not going to take this chest here, even though it does contain two relics. Because I can't get rid of the curse before Act 4, which seems really bad if it's like normality or something. So I'm going to skip this. We're going to fight the Nemesis. Um, who I believe is just dead turn one here. How much damage is this? Seven times nine times three? Yeah, that's a lot. Not quite a kill, actually, without the Forge Pot. Lives on eight. Didn't attack for 45. Thankfully. Glorious. That sort of helps. Actually, wait, that does help. Bonk. Magic Flower means we heal more during combat. Second Rage. Seems potentially required. Being Red's not bad either, but I'm going to grab the second Rage here. in a bottle. When we would die, heal to 30%? No. 45% of our maximum hit points. Seems pretty good. Also really valuing this Forge Potion. Who's the Gambler's Brew? We might just have it, Twitch Chat. I, I think this might be able to put something together. 
for the end game here. But first, we have to get through Transient. Easier said than done. Boo again. Ugh. I think we've thankfully we have Pandagraph, which heals for um thirty eight, I believe. It's pretty good. Twenty. Well, the good news is we got him. You're dead. GG. True Grid is a block card. Uh, not a very good one, though. I don't think I'm going to take that one. Back-to-back -back transient kills feels pretty good. Maybe we can get turn one kill on Giant Head this time. Not if I don't draw a spot weakness on the right turn. Good start. Beautiful. Duvu Doll. For each curse in the deck, gain one strength. We have two curses. Thanks to Necronomic Curse. Limit Break just got a lot better. That's a huge increase to our damage output. Also, second Limit Break. Seems really good. Now we have infinite damage. Wait, uh, sorry, third Limit Break. I didn't realize we had three. Third Limit Break. Even better. Even better. And I can get another curse. No, I'm going to fight a boss, right? We're not going to upgrade all cards because then I can't revive with the fairy in a bottle. Pro tip, taking the you can no longer heal effect, they mean it. You can no longer heal by any means, including something that would bring you back from death. So don't take upgrade all with a fairy in a bottle. Do take I am war. Do obliterate slime boss on turn one. Rip that guy. And get a pocket watch. If we play three or fewer cards on our turn, we'll draw three additional cards on the next turn. And Heavy Blade actually looks really strong. Give me that. Heavy Blade with Necro and this much strength is, is a lot of damage. So our first boss is the Awakened One. Gaining strength each time we play a power card. And I will do a couple of powers. 
That's just the kind of ironclad that I am. Four cards, please. There we go. Some block. Good turn one. With 20 strength, we should be able to kill Awaken One very quickly here. Hmm. And therefore, there is not much need for shenanigans. Doesn't get played twice, so we do get Pocket Watch here. You're dead. It's that simple. Very dumb deck. Love this run. Next up is... Donu and Dekka. That's a pretty promising turn one. How much damage is this? Seventy-seven. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> 231 damage to both of them. Oh my lord. I think if I played the strike first, they would have died. Mm, these are not the numbers they have the relics on, unfortunately. Hand of Greed, get in here. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Make me some money. Good job, Hannah Greed. Get in here. All right, Hannah Greed next turn. Let's go. More money, please. I refuse. Yes! More money. 50 gold off the Donu Deca fight. Let's go. Excellent. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of these ultra deadly whirlwinds? You ready your blade and spin to win? Have I been here before? That was the second boss. Yeah, we're at only 42 minutes into the uh, X4 here. A testament to just how blapperific this deck has been so far. Upgrades do feel important here in the late game. I'm thinking about these rages as a block plan. Half of our block plan is to kill really fast. Half of the block plan is to use rage and throw in a bottle to stay alive. Let's upgrade one of these rages. And then I'll use the Blessing of the Forge on the other one. Oh, this is also huge. Self-forming clay. Whenever you lose health, gain three block on the next turn. Very big for the heart fight, especially. Kenozi with the prime sub and the full year of support. Thank you, thank you. I could buy a shrug. Is shrug worth it? Helps a little bit. I'm not sure it is, actually. I do have five energy... Eh, close enough. Close enough. One shrug for the road. E.T. twice. We can just do Rage Double Whirlwind. That seems easy enough. That's three cards exactly, so we get to Pocket Watch next turn. What if I Limit Break Double Whirlwind? It'd be 12 times 14. For the Mathulator. That is 168, so we're just a little bit shy. Seems like a good enough turn to me.
just like that, you're gone. Very easy shield and spear fight. The boot is here for moral support. Second wind is here for actual support. Exhaust all non-attack cards in our hand and gain block for each one. That's really good. Power through is okay, but second wind is better, especially with the free upgrade. This gives us, honestly, pretty good odds going into the hard fight here. I think we are in great shape. Do have to be a little careful. Ooh, yeah, this is our Forge Pot. We upgrade Limit Break, Infernal Blade, Rage, Heavy Blade, quite a few things. I wish I could play Heavy Blade only one time. I guess it's okay to break Pocket Watch here. And I do want to take a little bit of damage from playing these cards. Um, to get more self-forming clay next turn. Yeah, this is fine. But we want to rush damage here, so double heavy blade. Plus the attacks. I get Pendim set up for next uh, attack, whatever it might be. Don't play Shrug. Because what if I draw something I want to play but I can't, like Dark Embrace or Evolve? Let's just guaranteed not get messed up by this attack. Multi-hit first is really good news with Still Forming Clay. I think I'm just going to go Rage, Whirlwind, Whirlwind. No second wind. Look at that damage. Almost capped it. Just off Whirlwind here. Oh yeah, I can't play second wind anyway. So we get hit a bunch, but that's good, because then I block a bunch. Although, how much of a bunch do we really block? Cabray, Shockwave, Limit Break, Limit Break, Flex. No, Flex, Limit Break, Limit Break. Maybe play the Evolve, actually, rather than one of these two Limit Breaks. Can't put the Limit Break on top because of Dark Embrace. This is fine. Got the Fairy, don't forget. But also look at the Heart's Health here. We are cruising. Um, this is what? Just double Perfected Strike, Brutality? Draw nine next turn? Draw all of these cards next turn? It's kind of spooky, actually. How do I survive the multi-hit? Hmm. Spooky. Oh yeah, Evolve will also help. We gotta be careful, though. Sounds like a problem for future Baylor. Okay, the problem, the answer is we don't have to. The answer is that we don't have to. So I'm just gonna double Whirlwind, use the Fairy to survive, and then we'll draw eight with Pocket Watch. We should be able to get the kill. Sounds good to me. Thankfully we don't die to the burn. Can you imagine how embarrassing that would have been? And Heavy Blade is here. I knew we took this Heavy Blade for a reason. GG, Mr. Hart. What a ridiculous ride this run was. GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.